Okay. Richard, welcome. Cable's Church over the past number of years has has enjoyed a lecture series called Thinking Aloud. You were there at the beginning and, and you're here for a special evening uh, 12 years on. Uh, we wonder as a parish how, how much progress we've made in encouraging people to think mm -hmm. and to do it out loud uh, given all the changes and, and uh, change circumstances within the world today. What, why do you think it is important um, for us to be thoughtful Christians as well as faithful ones? I think that one of the problems with Christianity at the moment, I think, is that it's, it's fissured into a lot of different groups, almost sectarian groups, sometimes within the same denomination. Um, and it's partly because the world, secular society, scientists, sociologists, philosophers, have been asking profound questions um, that can appear to erode the plausibility of Christianity. Um, and one reaction to that is to put up the drawbridge and not listen to the questions and hide behind some kind of moated enclosure. Um, and that's very attractive to a lot of people, that, that they, they retain a kind of traditional set of certainties, sometimes pre-scientific certainties. I mean, some people take it to such an extreme that they reject, for instance, evolution, and they believe in a six-day creation. I mean, it can be as absurd as that. And it's partly because thinking is painful. If it, especially about these profound, almost unanswerable questions which are at the root of the life of faith and struggle and doubt and all of that. Um, and I think that what I admired about Keynes was the way it decided, okay, this is the world we're in, and if we're followers of Jesus um, and we're interested in truth, then surely we should be able to uh, at least listen to these questions and maybe they will change the way we think about Christianity, maybe they will even chase us out of it, but we've got to be honest and listen to these questions. Um, and I think that churches that do that struggle in a way more than the more conservative churches because they're constantly open, they're constantly listening. It makes for, a, I think, an exhilarating but an uneasy life because they're no longer delivering a package certainty. And I think that that's what's happened in Cairns in the last 12 years. It's constantly asking itself questions. It may have disturbed its parishioners. It may have disturbed you. Um, how, how do I retain um, my credibility as a minister when a lot of the attitudes I used to accept, I no longer can accept? Am I out? Am I in? Am I in in a different way? I think this is an honest thing to be doing, but it's painful. And are you generally hopeful about the church generally to be able to make this um, paradigm shift or for it to evolve itself in, in keeping the kind of changes you've talked about in the world? Mm. I think basically I am, but I think big shifts are happening. I mean, there's no doubt at all that, that the forms of Christianity that are putting them in and are very successful are the very hard, certain, very slickly packaged ones where, where there's no room uh, for doubt or uncertainty. They tell you exactly what the nature of ultimate reality is. They tell you precisely how to behave, what opinions to hold about complex issues. Uh, they're certainly growing because a lot of people like that. What I think is happening to, and I don't like using labels, but more open Christian um, communities, is that they're learning to be more loose in the way they hold doctrinal convictions. Um, they're learning to be sceptical about all institutions, including institutional Christianity. But I think they're in a brilliant position to react to the current hunger for spirituality that's in the world at the moment. I mean, I, I go around doing stuff here and there, usually largely to unchurched groups. And there are always people that come up to me afterwards and say, I left the church, but I miss it. But I couldn't cope with what was being thrust down my throat. I wish I could find a place that was open and generous and questioning, where they wouldn't expect me to sign on a dotted line, absolute conviction but where they would nourish my spirituality and help me listen and be a part of a community. I think that's probably the new way for this other kind of Christianity to develop. It's going to have to be very open and very porous and not too creedal, 
not hammering people, but giving them a place where they can think about these ultimate questions of meaning and how best to live. And I think there's a hunger for that. Richard Holloway, we hope that, that, that Cairns in some way manages to fulfil that kind of ambition. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Very welcome. Thank you.